Welcome back. In this lecture we're going to talk about series connected circuit elements and then look particularly at the case of series connected resistors. When we talk about series, the definition of series is that two or more circuit elements which have the same current flowing through them are said to be in series. So in this particular circuit here we see that any current that flows through the 120 volt source must also flow through the 30 ohm resistor and you can find that quickly and prove it to yourself by writing KCL at the corner here. Likewise uh, the current that flows through the 30 ohm resistor must also flow through the 30 volt voltage source. Uh, you can find that by writing KCL at this point point. and then similarly if the current flows through the 30 volt source it must also flow through the 15 ohm resistor. So in this particular example we see that all four of these circuit elements are in series because the same current flows through them. And when I say the same current I mean the exact same current. The same charges flow through each of these circuit elements one after the other. Not the same amount of current but the exact same charges, the same current. All right, so let's use our idea. Let me know it's in series. We look at the circuit and see they're all in series. We know there's only one current in the circuit. There are four circuit elements, one current. There'll be four different voltages. There'll only be one current because they're all in series. So let's use this circuit as an example and let's figure out the power absorbed in each of these circuit elements just to have something to work toward. All right, so how do we do this? So let's write KVL for this circuit. And so we'll start as usual for our KVL in the bottom left corner and let's write KVL. So our method for writing KVL is we get the circuit element, the, the, the polarity symbol we hit first, we write down and then the number, so minus 120. And then we see we have plus V30. But the voltage V30 plus to minus, passive sign convention says current going this way, we can apply Ohm's law and we know that V30 is simply going to be 30 ohms times the current flowing in that resistor which we know is just a single current I. And then we move on and then here we have, hit the plus first, plus 30 volts and here we get plus V15 but again passive sign convention in Ohm's law says that V15 is simply going to be 15 times I and we know all this must be equal to 0 KVL. And so if you solve this you got one equation and one unknown and you solve for I you'll find that I must be equal to 2 amperes when you do the algebra for that. So we have 2 amperes flowing through each of these circuit elements. Now the question was what is the power absorbed by everything and so let's find the power absorbed by the 120 volt voltage source. All right, So the current flowing I, and notice how I is written, I is written flowing clockwise and so when it comes to the voltage source the I current is actually flowing up and again this is 2 amperes, we just figured that out and so the power absorbed is found when the current is directed into the positive terminal and so I'm really looking for the current this way down in the 120 volt source and that's going to be simply a negative 2 amperes. And so the power absorbed is going to be 120 volts and the current directed into the positive terminal of that 120 volts is negative 2 amperes and I'll get that will be negative 240 watts absorbed by the 120 volt source. Then when it comes to the 30 ohm resistor, the power absorbed by the 30 ohm resistor we can do V times I, or as we saw in our earlier lesson, we know the power absorbed in the resistor is always going to be I squared R, right? And the current in the 30 ohm resistor flowing in this direction is going to be 2 amperes, and that's squared times the 30 ohms. And when we do that calculation, we'll see that the 30 ohm resistor is absorbing 120 watts. And then if I'm looking for the power absorbed in the 30 volt source, it's a voltage source, we have to use V times I. The current I is moving in this direction, 2 amperes. The green current here is the same as the red current we found, 2 amperes. And the voltage is 30 volts. The current flowing into the positive terminal of that 30 volts is 2 amperes, passive sign convention. And we see 60 watts absorbed. And then lastly, we'll look for the power absorbed in the 15 ohm resistor, I squared R again. 
and we'll see that I squared R, R gives us 60 watts absorbed by the 15 ohm resistor. Now one little thing you can do to check here is of course if the resistors are absorbing power they have to, they're passive. We see the 30 volt voltage source, 30 volt voltage source is also absorbing power. It's got a positive power absorbed. So the resistors are absorbing power. The 30 volt voltage source is absorbing power. Where is that power coming from? It has to be coming from the 120 volt source. And then if you do the, if you look at the, all these powers absorbed that we found, you take them, all right, and if you were to add up all the powers absorbed, you'll see that the answer equals zero, and that makes sense. It has to because uh, the power uh, each element is absorbing has to come from somewhere. All right, let's do another example. So here we have another source, another circuit, and if you just a quick uh, casual glance at this, we'll tell you pretty quickly that these guys are all in series and there is a single current I flowing. And so we could do the same uh, exercise of finding all the power absorbed by these guys and that will add up to zero and I'll let you guys uh, work all the way through that but we'll just get it started. So let's write KVL. KVL for this is starting in the bottom left as I usually do uh, negative 120. All right. Then we have a voltage drop plus to minus. The current's flowing in this direction. The current flowing this way is I. The voltage drop across the resistor with the current I was going to be 30 I. All right, so we get plus 30 I. Here's a voltage source plus 2 VA. And then we get another voltage source here, excuse me, another resistor here. And the current's flowing this direction. So we get a voltage plus to minus. And the voltage plus to minus is going to be 15I using Ohm's law. So we have one equation, but we have two unknowns because of the controlled voltage source. So the controlled voltage source is uh, causing us not to be able to solve this, so we need to ask the controlled voltage source to help us out. So if we wanted the voltage VA, VA has been defined as being the voltage plus to minus as given on the circuit and we see that simply the negative of the voltage that we found right here. So VA has got to be the negative 15i. And if you take these two equations and two unknowns and you solve that system of equations, you'll find the answer i equals 8 amperes. And with the current i equals 8 amperes, you can now find the power being absorbed by this guy. You can find the power absorbed by the resistor, the power absorbed by this resistor, and you can find the power in the controlled source by using their voltage and current or i squared r or v squared over r. And you can simply check that you did it correctly by summing all the powers up, uh, all the powers absorbed, and that should equal zero. So now let's look at a special case of resistors connected in series. So let's look at a single, let's look at a pair of resistors, R1 and R2, that are connected in series. And it's easy to see that these two resistors are in series because whatever current flows through R1 must flow through R2. So the question in this particular uh, slide becomes, okay, we have these two resistors, R1 and R2, which are connected in series. Is there a, a single resistor that we can come up with that is equivalent to the two that are in series? And by equivalent, I mean if I were to put a voltage here, of course, some kind of current I will flow. If, if these two circuits are equivalent, putting the same voltage here will cause the same current to flow on this side. So basically given, given a voltage current relationship at this terminal, I expect to see the same voltage current relationship at this terminal if these two circuits are indeed equivalent to each other. So the question is, does this equivalent resistor exist? That's what we're after. So let's see if we can figure this out. So if we do this, we can see that if there is a current I, and this is just a single current flowing, the same current was going to flow here, all right? And so this current I enters the series connection, and it's going to give rise to some voltage V, all right? Now, what is this voltage V? Well, V is going to be, and we can write KVL, V is simply going to be the voltage plus to minus V1 plus to minus V2, and we know that V is going to be V1 plus V2, and then Ohm's law tells us that V1 is going to be IR1, and V2 is going to be IR2. And if you factor the I out, you'll get I times R1 plus R2, and that equals V. Well, if that same current I flows in this circuit, I need it to generate the exact same voltage V 
so that the two, two circuits are said to be equivalent. And so I'm looking for V. Of course, V in this case is I times R E Q. That's all we have. And we can see that these two circuits, these two circuits will have the exact same IV characteristic if R E Q equals R1 plus R2. So if I were to choose this resistor and choose the value of REQ to be R1 plus R2, then whatever VI relationship I get in this circuit, I would see the same VI relationship in this circuit if I choose R equivalent equals R1 and R2. You can take this relationship and you can extend it even further and if we say a collection of M resistors connected in series, and basically the derivation is exactly the same, instead of having just in the previous slide we had two terms, now we're going to have M terms, you can see in this case if we have a bunch of resistors, in this case M of them that are connected in series, then there is an equivalent resistor. I can take this circuit and I can come up with a single resistor, REQ, all right, and this single resistor, if there were a voltage current, a VI relationship for the upper circuit, I would expect to see the same VI relationship in the lower circuit, and that will occur when REQ is the sum of all of the resistors, R1, R2, R3, dot, 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 all the way up to Rm. So adding up all those resistor values will give me a single resistor that I could use to replace this series connection. Now we'll go forth, we'll look at another way of connecting up resistors, and then this gives us the ability to replace large, large circuits of resistors with just a single resistor and get the same IV behavior. And that becomes a great, great tool in letting us make a more complicated problem a simpler problem. All right, enjoy. I'll talk to you next time.